Hi. So this is uh, Eric Prostowski uh, on uh, EP on EP show, uh, and it's a delight for me today to be here with Dr. Pierre Jays. Uh, he has lots of titles, none of which are necessary, because in my opinion, he's one of the top guns, and he's been one of the top guns in our field for years. And I've asked him today to speak to a very exciting new area in ablation delivery. And, and just before I let you run with this, Pierre, let me, for those people who don't know the whole history of the field, give a very short history. I'm not sure you, but I think maybe you would. Certainly, we started with DC ablation. I did as well. You, that's right. That's right. Your paper on AV no reentry was a yeah. DC ablation. I forgot yep. about that. Yeah. So, DC ablation, radio frequency ablation, irrigated tips, um, you know, uh, uh, force sensing, you know, issues, balloons, lasers. And as we got more toys, that destroyed more area. My personal concern was always not just getting the job done, but collateral damage. But you're involved in a very exciting new area that may get around that problem. So why don't you tell us about electroporation? Yeah. Um, so it's a fascinating energy. Um, it it may seem as you uh, remembered uh, that we start, started with DC shocks. It may seem that the pendulum swings back. Uh, to the original energy, it's not quite the case. It's, it's significantly different from what we were doing in these early days. Um, and that was quite frightening. Um, I remember one day putting a catheter on um, a return pad with gel on it and delivering 80 joules. Jeez, it's an explosion. You right. see the arcing. It's it's frightening. Right. I did that I in the those. heart of my patients. <laughs> no, and don't you remember? That's frightening. That's why when I first heard about this technique, I said, oh, no, we're going back to that. <laughs> I remember how you held your breath. Remember, you put this 300 exactly. joule shock in. Yeah. It was like everyone was tense, and it was like, oh, okay, they're okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is a takeoff on that, right? So yeah. Tell us about it's, the technology. It's, so it's, it's quite different. Um, it's kind of domesticated, if you will. Um, so um, it um, it has several advantages. So the concept is that, that you're going to deliver a um, high voltage field to the cardiac cells, and this is going if your if everything is set well. This is going to create what they call irreversible electroporation, which means that you are going to create holes in the membrane that are going to compromise the homeostasis in, in, in the cell. And because of that, the cell are going to die. And you may not even uh, see the lesion acutely. If you look at them on the tissue, you may not see it acutely. So it's non-thermal. It's very different from RF, which is the uh, gold standard in the field. And it has several advantages. So RF is very good. It's very controllable, but it has some limitations, as you very well know. Um, first of all, it's thermal, so it creates um, quite some edema, which I think is a problem for several reasons. Um, and um, it kind of completely disrupts the architecture of the tissue as well. Um, we have issues um, making sure that um, we get transmural lesions, but not too transmural hitting the esophagus right. or phrenic nerve or whatever nerve that will uh, then create some complications on, on your stomach. And so it's, it's important to um, realize that electroporation has the potential to um, get away from these safety concerns. Reason being that um, this energy is tissue specific. I mean that if you look at the literature, it takes almost 4,000 volts per centimeter to uh, create damages to nerve cells. And it's only uh, 400 volts per centimeter to kill a cardiac cell. Okay. So it's a big safety margin here. And what about vessels? Is there vessels also are preserved as they well. They are preserved. Okay. Yeah, at the level of energy you need for killing cardiac cells, you will not impact vessels either. So can we ask you something uh, before we talk about AFib? So do you see this? I know it's in the early days and you guys are in the middle of the early research. Would this be a technique maybe you could use as an epicardial VT ablation where you're close to the LAD, for example? Definitely. Of course, no. we thought about that. Yeah. No. And so, um, you know, you know what it is. Research is oriented 
by the market in where the big market is, a the first research is. <laughs> right. So, but where is, is your head going but, also into the VT? But definitely, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. So the company I'm working with is also very dedicated to science, fortunately, and that's very good. And I'm grateful for them. Um, okay. Um, and may I and, interrupt you one second? Uh, from your early research, or, or do you know this? Is there a different energy level for a my atrium versus ventricle or all myocardial? Yes, cells? yes, this has been described in literature. You need a little more um, in, in the atrial tissue as compared to the ventricular okay. tissue. Yeah, still but safe though, right? But very safe. Okay, it's, it's minimal difference. Okay, yeah, okay. So, what have you found out in your early studies for AFib? Um, well, we're pretty excited. So. Um, where we are at present time is that we have a, a pretty solid ground of experimental uh, data, uh, mostly in swine, with epicardial ablation. And this was the initial vision of that company. Um, I, I wasn't quite sure that this would work. I mean, sub-epicardial approach for right. uh, doctors to get rid of AF, I, I still think it's a little bit... Uh, probably difficult to accept and that the uh, th this could be a limitation so right. I, I, I'm still happy they did it because it's a nice proof of concept and now it's for surgeons to play with this device that they have developed and it's very good to have this kind of um, um, this kind of uh, uh, approach for concomitant surgery so let's say you do cabbage or valve replacement um, and then you place this catheter around the primary veins you get your box vision within eight cardiac cycles, super fast. Incredible. And, and you're done, right. it's amazing. But I know the history of Bordeaux. I don't mean the, the, the great wines, I actually know a little bit about that too, but I actually know your history. There's no way you're not t doing this epicardially. So what have you done inside the heart? I know you must have done something in the heart. Of course, of course. So my, my advice to the company was to consider okay. having that doable with a catheter and the usual on the cardial approach, transeptal approach. And so they have developed su such a catheter. Um, it's, it, it's pretty good now. We've been using it in animals only so far, uh, but we start to have a significant experience. Uh, we've been trying different waveforms and it's, it's, it's quite a work to determine the ideal uh, type of energy you're going to use. So there has been quite some work there. Uh, the generator development as well is, is, is tricky, uh, but we, we have something that works nicely now. And um, in those animals, we could um, demonstrate at one month's uh, remapping and uh -huh. histology that we, ha we were having complete isolation of the veins with no recurrences at all. This was done in um, seven animals. Uh, with the latest um, and type no, of energy. And no collateral damage, right? Absolutely no collateral damage. I think it's very exciting. It uh, is. So this is this is this may be it, I, right? Well, it may be right. I, I've never I've never been that excited, <laughs> and I've never seen a new strategy for ablation that was so easy and so successful from the um, animal experiments stage. Well, so, well, super excited. I've been following the literature on it, and I'm very excited. And uh, it makes me better knowing a group as sophisticated as yours, especially you, got, you in particular, are doing it because you're academically honest about your results. You always have been, and to see you excited, um, I, you know, at some point I'm probably going to need an AFib ablation. Hopefully, not for a number of years. But so I, I want you to keep working on this. So thank God I don't have it now, but as I get older and older at some point, so I want to make sure you've got the catheter system ready. But listen, thanks so much for joining us thank today. You, Rick. And thanks for getting us up to date on this exciting research. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks.